Hello and welcome to Kirby SQL Talk. Today is part four of a video series where we're building a high availability and a DR solution in Azure for SQL Server. Today we're going to install the SQL Server failover cluster instance. Um, I'm pulling up this graphic to just remind you what we've done so far. We have three VMs in Azure and we've set up our Windows Server failover cluster. And today we're going to set up the failover cluster instance. So these are the steps that we've done in prior videos. And in order to set up the FCI, we're going to allocate storage. We're going to configure the SIOS data keeper software and create a job for SIOS. And then we're going to install SQL Server into the cluster. So let's build it in Azure. I'm going to switch over to Azure. And uh, these are the two VMs that we're dealing with that are going to be our FCI failover cluster instance. So we simply click on the VM and uh, a blade comes up under properties, under settings, I'm sorry. And we'll click the disks and we're going to attach a new disk. We're going to, we can just leave it as the default name, set it to two gigabytes. And then for host caching, we're going to select read only and click OK. Okay, so the data disk has been provisioned. So we're at a point now where we're going to go to the actual VM itself and configure that disk so that we can use it. So here we are in the VM and we right click on the Windows button and let's select disk management. When we do that, we're going to be prompted to initialize the disk. So just leave it as the default master boot record option and click OK. Let's expand out this window here, and then we're going to see the new volume that we've created and simply right click on that and we'll select the new simple volume and we'll walk through the new simple volume wizard to prepare the disk for use. We'll leave it at the fully allocated disk space that we've set aside. Uh, set this to something that makes sense to you. I'm going to pick G. Leave the file system as NTFS and then optionally you can change the volume label, call it data, click next, finish the wizard, and then it's done. You'll be prompted to format it, but that's unnecessary. And there's our G drive. Okay, so our disk drive is available on this VM, and I've already set uh, the, a similar drive up on the other node of the cluster. So at this point, we want to look at the SIOS Data Keeper software and get that ready. The very first thing you'll do is go to the license key installer and um, install the license that you've purchased. I have the key in my clipboard, so let's click the enter license manually and then you can paste the license key and install the license. It says that it's been detected and installed successfully. So we'll exit out of here. Then what we need to do is go to our services and restart the SIOS service if it's not already started. So let's let the services come up here. Search on SIOS. And uh, it is not running, so we're going to go ahead and start it. Close that out. So now that that's running, we're going to go to the actual Data Keeper software itself. So here's the Data Keeper software. We're going to connect to a server. In fact, we're going to connect to both servers. So this is SQL FCI1 in our domain. It's successfully connected. And we're going to connect to another server, uh, the other one, SQL FCI2. Com. That's been connected successfully. Now cl uh, click the server overview. As you can see, we can see both drives. We have the G drive that we just set up on this cluster and the one that I set up earlier. So now one of the last steps is to create a job. And this job is going to keep these um, two drives in sync. So we're just going to call this um, our G drive 
sync, create the job. And um, this is our source, which we can leave as FCI one. Then our target is the FCI two. Click next. We're gonna um, make this a synchronous job. Click done. Now at the end of the job, it's going to prompt you and it'll say that this volume um, that we just created is eligible for a Windows Server failover cluster. Do you want to auto register it? Let's pick yes. Okay, then in a couple seconds, the state of the job will, will show that it's mirroring. So now we have successfully set up a, a synchronization job that is synchronizing the G drive in the one node of the failover cluster with the G drive of the other one. So this is sandless storage, um, uh, allowing us to set up a failover cluster instance. Let's close out that. Now we're at the point that we can install SQL into the cluster. So I have uh, an uh, ISO image that I've downloaded for SQL Server 2016. And we'll open that up, double click setup. And I won't walk through every step of the wizard, but I just wanted to point out the initial option that we want to pick for our failover cluster. Okay, we're back a few seconds later. We're at our SQL Server Installation Center. You want to pick installation. And uh, at this point, you want to pick a new SQL Server failover cluster installation and click that option. So at this point, all the remaining steps are identical to the way it would be for an on-premise installation. So I'm going to skip over that. And next, we're going to show you how to set up an internal load balancer in Azure so that you can connect to this new SQL instance that we've just installed, that we're about to install. I wanted to show you one more thing before we moved on. So now we're on node two of the failover cluster, getting ready to install SQL. And instead of clicking the new SQL Server failover cluster installation, we'll click add node to a SQL Server failover cluster because we're adding an existing node. So I'm going to leave the load balancer, internal load balancer for the next video. And thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.